Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Film House. I know what you're thinking. James, you're the host. That means it's going to be some sort of stupid thing that you always do again that's tangentially related to film. Well, I have news for you. In a twist of fate, you're 100% right, and that's exactly what we're, we're going to be doing today. My guests this week are Chris Damaris. Hello. Hello, Chris. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I like your bandana. Hey, Chris. Thank you. Yeah. You look like you're going into battle, bud. I know. So there's <laughs> many kind of, movies. Kind of are. There are many movies that have bandanas mm -hmm. uh, wearing characters. Detail. Yeah, that's a is detail. that a detail? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then our other guest this week is Dan Schneider. Hi, um, everybody. Everyone knows Dan. Hey, Dan. Welcome back to the show. Thanks, man. How are you? It's good to be back. What uh, what are, what would you wear into battle if you were going into battle? Oh boy. Um, what are those things called where you have like a lot of bullets on a belt? And Guns. Like wear, a wear bandolier? Your, bandolier. I want a couple of those. I I always thought it'd be fun to and then like Rambo style. Yeah, Rambo style wear a bandolier, but not actually use a weapon that allows those yeah, bullets exactly. to be functional. Yeah. You know, like I don't, I'm not carrying around an M16. I just have like a, well, I would have a Desert Eagle. We all know that. Um, thank you guys so much for being here. This is going to be just a really fun movie film discussion. I know you both are movie people. You love movies, but you don't just watch them. You, I think you understand them. You understand how they work. And I think that's an important part of this process. If you haven't seen the uh, previous version of this uh, show, uh, basically what we're going to do today is I have gathered our PA Rick has done an amazing job gathering as many movie details as he can find from the movie details subreddit and uh you all know my relationship i'm a huge fan never I, have anything to say well go ahead dan I, i'm just um, do you remember like the first time you came across one of these that it made you so angry that you started this vendetta because this I isn't like just, the first second or even maybe seventh or eighth time i've been on a video with you where you've talked shit about movie details and i'm just curious if there was just one that you're reading something about the grinch or whatever and you snapped <laughs> i don't remember which one taught me to hate because <laughs> it, it doesn't happen it doesn't happen like that you know it's a gradient okay. of change mm -hmm. um but i do i do know that i was there for the conception of it so I, what, I don't remember what the detail actually was, but it was in the movies subreddit that someone actually shared something really interesting. And I remember reading the comments and someone said, we should devote a subreddit to that. And then someone in the comments of this thread said, I made it. And then I remember okay. clicking on it and there were like two posts at the time. And I said, this sounds really cool. And so I subscribed. And, and how many subscribers are there now? A ton. It has the the subreddit is pretty pretty massive. I mean, it exploded, and a lot of the things make it to the front page. Um, are are you see. still like hate subscribed to this? Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, because a lot of people have said to me, "Why don't you just stop?" And I can't do that. <laughs> um, I can't. I don't know. I can't. Well, now it's like I a perverse right now, but. pain is pleasure kind of situation yeah, yeah, it, got going it's on. A masochism. It, yeah. It powers me. Oh my gosh, there's a TV details, gaming details. Ooh. Oh my gosh, I didn't even realize there was more to this. Oh, baby. I just found my covered. next 12 podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so so I have a I have a long relationship with this and I really think it's funny to discuss them because some of them are really good, but 90% of them are trash made by people who are trying to either fish karma imaginary karma points on Reddit. Mm -hmm. or don't know how movies work. Um, and then other people are well-meaning, and they just like look up trivia on IMDb and repurpose it here or whatever. Uh, is is um, it possible there's a fourth category of Funhouse fan who posts just to try and get on your nerves? I, I don't think, I don't know that that's happened yet. There will be now. I don't know Maybe that, today. <laughs> that I've gotten baited, and I, yeah, I, but I feel like everyone, it, I don't know, that would just be an invisible addition. Because I already see something that someone doesn't even know who I am. And they go, I have a great idea to post something. And they post it and they go, I hate you. Um, <laughs> I, that's what happens already. I used to uh, frequent IMDb trivia mm -hmm. immediately yep. after watching a movie. Like that was just mm -hmm. a thing. I'm like, ooh, I'm going to see what IMDb says. Um, yep. I kind of got out of the habit of that. I also, partly because I, I'd stopped trusting the trivia that they mm -hmm. listed on IMDb. Yep. Well, yeah. Is there is there anyone going through that and well, deleting incorrect trivia? I don't know. That's like, what's the, that process? He, he, that I I did a test. 
Uh, uh, no. I submitted my own trivia. Um, okay. uh, for what movie? Uh, it was Children of the Corn, and it was all about okay. the corn. It was like ninety percent of the corn seen in the film is polyurethane, you know, and like, and, uh, and it was difficult to film certain scenes because the, mm-hmm. the children had to eat plastic, or you know, like or whatever. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then have and you checked to see if it's still there? I it probably is. It uh-huh. was, and I was like this, and and I feel bad because I was you know submitting false trivia, but I had to see. Had, well, sometimes it's the only way to know. Sometimes it's only, well. I'll say this as well: movie details got such a widespread reputation and such a bad reputation that there is a another subreddit that is also very large called "shitty movie details," <laughs> which is in an entire subreddit devoted to parody how terrible the movie details are right. where it'll, it'll be something like at the beginning of Shawshank Redemption it shows the exterior of a prison this prison <laughs> represents the title of the film Shawshank Redemption like real shitty things right. um, but either way just to prep those of you who are joining us for the first time or maybe didn't see the last one we did of this I'm going to give some uh, uh, maybe set the barometer for us to see where oh. things land so, um, oh, did you find I, it? I found it. Um, you found your, <laughs> I your found trivia? Oh. Yeah. Uh, though real corn was used for most of filming, polyurethane <laughs> corn had to be used for the more difficult action sequences. And 57 out of 60 yeah, how many people, people like found it? this interesting. <laughs> it's it's one of the more highly regarded <laughs> really? trivia of this film. This is- so you're, so you're like the Joker. Yeah, yeah, you're like the Joker. You just want to watch the world burn. <laughs> um, but this is what it's all about. And and those people that that have posted and valued IMDb trivia have now appearing appeared to migrate. So without further ado, let's start. Here's something that is a good what what last time we considered a good movie detail. Right. Um and so uh, I'll also concede that mm-hmm. out of the 15 we got through, this was the only one that landed in Ooh. good movie detail category. So uh, in Wizard of Oz, 1939, when they're sent to kill the Witch of the West, Scarecrow straight up brings a gun. And it includes a screenshot of Scarecrow with oh, the yeah. gun. Huh. Um, it's like a revolver. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that um, is a good and detail. So, and I didn't and know it about it. It is a good it. detail. Yeah. I did I did know about it. I remember having the Wizard of Oz VHS as a kid and at one point I think my older brother was like, "Wait, what does he have there?" And we like paused it and just like, "That's funny." Um, well, it's easy. But it it's yeah. easy to be courageous when you have a gun. <laughs> yeah, it it's like, is. Oh yeah, he found his courage. <laughs> a 9 millimeter. <laughs> yeah. She's like, "Water is my enemy." And then gets a bullet between the eyes and goes down real fast. So, so that's an, that's something we decided was a good movie yeah. detail. Um, okay. Then we also had category for like nice try. Um, this was an example of a pretty good example of a nice try detail, which is about the film Interstellar. Um, for Interstellar, Christopher Nolan planted 500 acres of corn just for the film because he did not want to CGI the farm in. And then after filming, he turned it around and sold the corn and made back profit for the budget. Um, we nitpick some of the wording here because you know you, you can't they didn't they didn't sell the corn real. for more than the, the budget of the film. But uh-huh. got a real corn um, theme going on today, you guys. Yeah, yeah. also corn theme. <laughs> Presumably, uh, real corn, not polyurethane. <laughs> Presumably, but so this is the kind of thing we were like, hey, that's interesting. You wouldn't know that when you are watching the film, but it also doesn't matter at all. It's like a production it has, detail. It's a production detail that doesn't really enhance the film in any way. Like it's just some, it's just a decision that the creator wanted to make for yeah. the sake it's, of their process. Right. It's okay. not a detail of the film. It's a trivia about the film. Exactly. So, so that's something that kind of fell into the, Nice try category. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then for the bad, oh boy, let's take our pick. Basically everything else was bad. Oh, oh, this is probably the one of the worst ones. Um, In uh, in Hook, 1991, the window latch is a mini hook. 
Um, and so someone posted this screenshot of the window latch from Hook, and it's, you know, so, one of the things. That yeah. You, but it, it's shaped. exactly, it's exactly Captain Hook's hook from mm. the film Hook. Yeah. Except the shot that they're using as a detail is a close-up shot that holds on it and show like it's not a detail. It is literally front and center. Yeah. Okay. You know, like it, is <laughs> it would the be shot. like Yeah. It, there's a detail in Blade that Blade is a vampire. Like that's <laughs> not a detail. That's something that the movie is explicitly trying to convey to you. And if you missed it, you just like you have no reason to ever be watching anything essentially um okay so that's an example of a bad movie detail just to kind of set your guys' tolerance but you know this is a discussion so i want to keep that discussion open um i don't want anyone to feel like they can't make a case for one thing or another thing but are you guys ready to get into this uh this exciting adventure (laughs) and uh sort out some of these movie details i brought the bandana so (laughs) great okay let's do this i'm just I'm just going to start with the uh, the first one uh, here, and let's see. We're not okay. also supposed to be looking at a dock of some sort, are we? I can share you on the dock if you, no. you guys want to look at it. Sometimes it's just, generally it's just a screenshot okay. um, or, or something like, and I'm happy to share the screenshot if you, if you want to take a look. Just your example um, used a miniature hook picture, and you know that might sway me one way or the other. Mm. Yeah, well, we can if if you feel like you need a visual descriptor right. or whatever, we can do that. Um, okay, in Thor Ragnarok 2017, they always put the put the year in case we get it confused with the other Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> um, during the arena fight with Hulk, he has every weapon he uses broken until he gets a hammer once again. He, I think, <laughs> referring to <laughs> Thor. <laughs> So what they're saying <laughs> here is, a... yeah, what it, they're saying is, is that in the fight scene, he has he uses a bunch of other tools, but the fight only ends after he gets a hammer. I see. This is That's somebody trolling you, man. That this is the most ridiculous that, detail I've no, ever heard. That sounds like a, a a a an action line from a screenplay written by a freshman in college. <laughs> That's what a lot of this does appear to be is people look wa- like actually watching movies for the first time. Well, yeah, because that's um, just exactly what happens. That's not a yeah, detail. Yeah. That's just describing. Poorly describing. They believe that there is, <laughs> they are finding significance in it. They think that it is significant that the hammer, he gets a hammer and the, and that's how he beats even well, though I would of say Thor's that it, hammer, I, because of hmm. Thor, Thor's hammer, yes, but it's not his hammer. He doesn't get his hammer. He just gets a hammer, and that's the one that doesn't break. He just gets that's the one he happens to be what? using. When so the he fight just ends. gets a hammer. Yeah, it's not. It's not his hammer. It's not Mjolnir. It's that's a, a little more. It, that's actually a little more interesting. I don't think I noticed that. Okay. Okay. Before I, when you Did just you, said hammer, I said it's so badly worded. Yeah, yeah that, it's, it's terribly just confusingly worded. Yeah. <laughs> if the point was that, oh, it's cool that the hammer is the thing that doesn't break, mm-hmm. but it seems yeah. the way it's written, it focuses on all of the weapons breaking being mm-hmm. the detail. I don't know. Like, yeah. I, I did not notice that when I watched that, but I don't, I don't remember that fight scene but, too much. Yeah, I would say, did you not notice it because it's not significant, <laughs> and because because that's what some of the stuff is is people trying to find details in places where there are not. Hmm. Yeah, that one's that one's it's not as bad as I initially thought it was. I mean, that's why you have the nice try category. <laughs> you know, that's what it's there for. Um. Also, also the best thing about half of these is that it's just someone who is on the couch and they just took they just took their phone and just like took a a, a screenshot with their phone of their um, Vizio TV. Yeah, which is what this because it's all crooked and washed out. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I think that this one is horribly worded, but I'm not entirely against giving it the nice try i think they may be reading more into this than they're because it's not like 
It's not like Thor only knows how to use hammers. And it wasn't until he got his hands on a hammer that he was able to turn the tide of the fight. I feel like there's a lot more of an emotional stake Mm -hmm. in this fight happening at this scene, which is when the fight actually turns in his favor. Does he actually win that fight? I thought the whole no, beat I think him he up loses. or something. Yeah, I think he or loses. It's interrupted in some way. That's also mm. another thing they're saying is it's not that he wins. It's just that everything else gets broken. The oh. hammer doesn't. Yeah. That's probably a nice try. Mm-hmm. There's some inter- There's something interesting about that. Mm-hmm. What, what's but. the category called where it's a stupid movie detail? What's that's kind of like the nice try. Like, well, no, what's, no what's worse is, than a nice try? I don't know that we have a category for worse than a nice try. Well, like, no, because there's like good movie detail, nice try, mm-hmm. and you're an idiot. Bad. Bad. It's bad. just called bad. That's bad. I'm yeah, calling this one bad. bad. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Bad. And then, Chris, how do you feel? I'll, I'll this is democracy it. after all. After breaking it down and learning that it is not <laughs> Thor's hammer. Mm hmm. I will say nice try. I well, Dan, I love I hate all of these. <laughs> I will tell you from the bottom of my heart. I am gonna give this a nice try oh, because okay. it does look like someone did notice something about this film. I don't just don't know if it's that significant. And and also I'll say this, maybe you just haven't truly been offended yet. Like mm. I think you haven't maybe you haven't truly smelled shit, which okay. is why you think that this day old pizza well, might smell bad, can, you know. <laughs> can I reserve the possibility to come back and give it a nice try? Absolutely. Or, or, I'm going to put we, it. Well, we're filling in with we pen voted on here. It. Is it? We're going. Ink? We went to. We went to two to okay, one. So we're going to give it the nice try. Right, okay. But but I do. I am going to keep the always keep the the option open that if you see something that just absolutely offends you, to go back and then change it right. later. Or something. Yeah, I think maybe my barometer maybe isn't completely tuned mm-hmm. to, to what's going you on have a, You have to do what I do, which is uh, read a lot of them and get really angry. <laughs> and this one didn't make me furious. So, okay. all right. But we, you guys ready to move on? Let's move on to the Let's next one. Let's do it. Okay. This is great. This is exact. This is the whole show. <laughs> for anyone, <laughs> for anyone watching or listening at home, this is the whole show. Please feel free to play along. Are all they right. all hammer themed questions? I don't think so. I haven't seen them. Again, these are all new to me. Two out of three are corn so far. Oh, yeah. (laughs) That's true. Another another fun thing about this is seeing how many upvotes, which is like how popular it was on the subreddit. Because there's a lot of times where it's just terrible. And then I'll ask you guys how you think people felt about it. Because some of them, people downvote and they say it's terrible too. And other people love it. All right. Here's the next one. In Wally 2008... The captain is physically incapable of wearing the original captain's uniform, so he just wears it around his neck with the top button. So you know in Wally, the the captain, um, voiced by Jeff Garland, I believe, uh, he's he's very he's very obese, yeah, very fat, but he still has his captain's jacket, and he still kind of like buttons it around his neck. Um, does he ever fat. try to does it ever show him putting it on I feel like I feel like at some point in the movie it does show him putting it on yes. or trying to put it on and button it because that's like it's been a while since I've seen it but mm-hmm. if it's just like a, if you don't really if it's like a background thing that you don't notice then maybe it's but mm-hmm. if it's like a scene of him trying to put it on then it's like, well, yeah, that's that's obvious. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to tell you that I'm looking at the screenshot that they're using here, and there's almost no way to not notice this. Okay. <laughs> um, it's but if pretty... it never brings attention to itself, I kind of agree that, you know, that's pulling a nice little background detail. Can you share out. the screenshot? Yes, I'm happy happy to share the screenshot here. <laughs> Um, I thought I clicked on the right one in that doc, and it's a picture of a scarecrow with a gun. <laughs> so can you guys see see what I see here? Mm. Oh, yeah. This, like, so this uh, is the screenshot. This It's not like miss. it's hanging on the wall behind him or anything like that. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty obvious. It's pretty explicit. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's a cartoon, so it has cartoon design. I'm also going to add the fact that 
looking at this, it does appear that even if he was, like, even if this character was 300 pounds lighter, still not going to fit into that jacket. No. Is it? That jacket is for a very tiny person. There's no way fat or skinny that any that this human being could fit into that jacket. So there may be something else at play. But yeah, they um, gave him a very small jacket for a very large man. Mm-hmm. I, so I've never seen Wally. I don't know if I have to abstain. <laughs> um, oh, but is this like a major character? Is he like a background character? Does major he have lines? character. Major character. There is a, I'll say this, um, man, this is again, I'm going to let put my bias on the line. Um, I'll say this. There is numerous references to how fat people are. Right, you know? right. I'm aware of and, that. Like all the humans in the future are very large. There's even a series of portraits showing skinny or skinny or more like less morbidly obese sized captains going, 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 going until we land on this captain and they're all getting a little bit larger, a little bit larger until he is the largest of them all. So it's not like yeah. it's subtle. Is maybe a nice try? Maybe, and I, I'm leaning towards maybe. I kind of hate it. I'm not gonna lie. Uh huh. I kind of hate this because, yeah, no shit. It's his jacket. Yeah, and yeah. no shit. It's small. Like, yeah, I get it. Yeah, it might be pointing um, out the obvious too much to be a nice try. Yeah, like, like it is probably, an obvious movie detail. Yeah. Mm, I guess I it's kind of like again, saying like. It's kind of like saying uh. Spider-Man wears a mask to obscure his face so that people don't recognize him. Yeah, it's like no duh. Which is yeah. probably <laughs> something that has been posted <laughs> on movie details in the past. Um, yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it. But again, you know, I, I'm going to vote for this being bad. A bad detail. Yeah, I'll accept. I, I, will, I will second that. Seconded? Dan, yeah. how do you feel about that? I mean... Having not seen Wally, it's hard to know, but I'm going to go mm-hmm. with bad detail because it seems pretty obvious. Right. I'm going to put this, pop this right in the bad details. Again, maybe not the worst bad detail, but a pretty good example of someone watching something and going, I'm seeing this. I'm the only person who noticed this and thinking that they are the center of the universe. And, <laughs> and yeah, th- there's something about that Mark. <laughs> there's yeah. something about just yeah. stating something that's there. That mm-hmm. white, well, technically might be a detail, I feel like yep. qualifies as a bad detail. Yeah. Didn't have to. They didn't have to do that. Okay. All right. So we're going to put that. I'm going to throw that in the bad category. We're doing great, guys. It's been <laughs> 23 minutes. We've done two of these. All right. Sweet. Let's <laughs> yeah, speed move it up. On. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Um, in the Truman Show, hmm? we see Truman taking high dose of... Okay, sorry, everything is translated to a different language than back to English. We see Truman (laughs) taking high-dose vitamin D at breakfast time. This is to counteract the deficiency he would have because there is no real sunlight in the constructed world he inhabits. Hmm. I will say that is a, that is a, that's a good one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit this here. This is a screenshot that is being shared. Um, a still, what appears to be a still from the movie. Um, oh, it's not a, that's a good one. Cause I think the vitamin D is off to the side. It's not even a focal point. It's not a story. Mm-hmm. It's a background yeah. kind of thing, but it's also, you also have to have the knowledge that you need sunlight uh, or vitamin D is sunlight. There's a lot of little hidden layers yeah, to that. You're putting it together a like- layer of scientific knowledge of how the mm-hmm. world works. And then pulling yep. a, a detail out of the background. You're pulling it out of the background. Mm-hmm. It's not it feels like, up in front of your face. It feels like the production designer read the script, actually read the script, and wanted to figure out how to put their fingerprint on the end product is, is how I feel about this, honestly. I, I would say even in this frame here, because he's holding, what is that, a, a, a little world globe mm-hmm. yeah, it looks thing like that has globe. his T in it mm-hmm. that almost even and with the lighting the, the vitamin D is on the left that's almost like the mm-hmm. sun lighting the earth yeah. you're right <laughs> you should repost this with the screenshot of this detail and say this detail and then the year the detail was posted <laughs> yeah <laughs> how do we know which Truman show this is they didn't post the 
date after the Truman Show. Oh, yeah. shit. I guess. <laughs> um, I'm, I agree. I honestly, as someone who hates movie details, I agree. <laughs> I think this is a really good detail. Maybe the best we've ever seen. <laughs> Whoa. Well, calm best down, James. I, calm, calm down. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I just th- I think this is a perfect example of a detail that adds to the film, reinforces the film, right? Mm-hmm. It's subtle. It's certainly not the center of frame, but someone did put it in such a way that it could be viewed and could be understood and could be interpreted if someone ever decided mm-hmm. to go through it again. I and it. I, I think it's really good. The only question is, I, I mean, I no Truman show pretty well. And I don't think that there's a point right after this where Ed Harris explains to someone <laughs> that he takes vitamin D for breakfast because there's no sun. I guess that, that was the my only question. Thing that would destroy this. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. been about 20 years since is. I've seen the Truman show. And I don't know if he like holds them close to the camera and pops a couple and says, these are because of the sun. I don't think there is. Okay. I, it has, it has been maybe a couple years since I've seen Truman show, but I don't think that it's ever explicitly referenced that. Oh yeah, we need to do, we need to figure out stuff to make up for the fact that he doesn't get actual sun. Yeah. This, I like this detail a lot and it's I'm prepared detail. to vote for it as a yes detail. Yeah. Great detail. There are 767 comments on that detail though. And I am not quite sure how you could discuss the comment that much. There's people discussing the dosage. It would appear. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh boy talk about getting in the weeds and movie yeah details. they're really getting in the weeds here that you never want to get if you if you find something you like in movie details you should just accept it as a win and move on because <laughs> okay. now it's people arguing about whether or not the label is accurate and but they could lie about how much there there is in the world then there are all kinds of stuff so um yeah so, you should be taking uh, d3 yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this right into the uh, good detail the category. All right. I think this is a great detail. I think deets. this is even better than the scarecrow. Honestly, I think this is a maybe yeah. maybe one of the best. Movie I'd say better I've than the seen. that's that's better than the scarecrow because the scarecrow detail still was just pointing out that he had a gun in his hand, which is an obvious thing. Yeah, it's a, just kind of weird. Um, okay, all right, let's move on. In this scene, so there's going to be a video clip. In this scene of Jojo Rabbit 2019, Heil Hitler is said 31 times in one minute. Hmm. According to writer-director Taika Waititi, he wanted a funny moment, but also wanted to illustrate how ridiculous Nazi protocols were. And then it is that's the, detail? the scene. Hmm. But it's a pretty obvious... I mean, that's pretty obvious in the scene. That's just kind of like explaining... Th- yeah, the, the only, only thing... thing- that- the exact number of, yeah. of piles is the only information that details providing me. And is there is there I can't I don't can't deter, decipher if there's anything significant about like if thirty one was something significant. I guess to, he's, they're like pointing out that what Taika said about the purpose of that was to mm-hmm. show how silly it or. What was the yeah. quote? It was like, how ridiculous. But that's, but that's obvious. That's, that's like someone joke. saying, yeah, it's in this scene in Naked funny. Gun, Leslie Nielsen drinks the the urine sample because it shows how funny that it would be for someone to do that. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, this, like, <laughs> yeah, this is bad. I, I, I would like someone to explain all of the humor in Naked Gun. I think that sounds mm-hmm. like, like a great use of time. <laughs> this is this is literally someone just taking a joke and going this is why a joke is funny even though I don't think anyone watched this movie the first time saw this scene and was mortified by it like like it's it's played so much for comedy it's played so so obviously for comedy that I don't know how this could be I mean there's got to be someone detailed. out there that doesn't get the humor of that movie there's just got to be some there people take the world too seriously. But yeah, this this person yeah. is just pointing out the obvious and explaining trying it, to explain why something's funny. It's kind of like the uh the commentary for um Arnold Schwarzenegger's commentary for uh Total Recall. And or the, anything yeah. he's ever done. There's yeah. a time where I, uh, I and now see I I'm a woman and I pretend to be mm-hmm. so they don't recognize <laughs> yeah. me. And then I and now see look, 
the effect is wearing now the off. woman she only says two weeks yeah so then the how the head comes off yeah and then it becomes a bomb <laughs> is he he just and summarizes what happens he, he, just, just, he just describes yeah. what's happening on screen <laughs> in a weird way it's one of the best commentaries uh you could watch it's pretty surreal um yeah so i'm this is not a detail in my opinion this seems like it's someone explaining the obvious intent of a scene. I mean, and I, yeah. if 31, if 31 was significant in some way, if they say in this, in this scene in Jojo Rabbit, they say Heil Hitler 31 times. This is a reference to the 31 people who this, that, or the other thing that all did that. It doesn't appear that's the case. It seems like 31 yeah. is an arbitrary number. They're just counting for us. They just count yeah, it. They so just counted the number of the, times. The, the only part of this one that maybe is a detail is that it seems like they took some information from an interview with Taika mm -hmm. and brought that information from an interview into the movie details mm -hmm. subreddit. So there's like a little yes. bit of detail there. Well, maybe. But it was from a bad interview. If someone was yeah, like, hey what, what, hey, what was the deal with that? He's like, well, that was the joke. <laughs> that was a joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What was that? Why did you call? Why, so why in this scene did you have them say Heil Hitler 31 <laughs> times? Because it's funny. Mm, huh. Interesting. I'll write this down. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to pull out my old typewriter and make that the headline of the article. Jojo Rabbit. Funny? Sometimes? Question <laughs> mark. Uh, um, I, I, to gauge the temperature, I'm guessing we're all leaning towards bad detail. This is bad. I'm bad. I'm I'm going bad detail. I also want to point out that this detail has about 30,000 more upvotes than uh, the last detail that we said was a good detail. Okay. 105,000 people said this Whoa. that they thought that was this this was awesome, the greatest thing that they've how, ever heard in their entire life. How many comments? Uh, there are 1.9 thousand comments mm, on this. What, what, is, what are the comments? Just wow! Look at the way uh, it counts. It's just it, a lot of times it's just people going, "I love this movie." I'm like, "That so? <laughs> you can love the movie, but that doesn't mean you have to." So, um, mm. yeah, it's just people. It's just people talking about stuff. I'd yeah. be. I no. wonder if you just have a better chance of getting upvoted if you just pick movies people like. Oh. And then Baby, it's like, it doesn't matter. You bet. It doesn't matter what you it bet. is. Yeah, you bet. You okay. go, if you have a Dark Knight detail, just throw it up there. <laughs> Even if you don't, people love, people want to see it. Um, Chris Nolan's okay. brother wrote that movie. Yeah. Chris Nolan has a brother who also works on movies, and he wrote this one with his brother. 100 million upvotes. Um, okay, so we're throwing that in the bad category. Here's the thing. We are... 33 minutes in. Do we, do we need we to go we faster? Have, I, we don't have to go too that much faster, but um, we, we take our time. But this is kind of what, what's fun about it. But I do want to take a minute real quick to talk about one of our sponsors, Feels. We've all been there, stressed, full of anxiety, but the hustle bustle of modern life. Some of us even experience chronic pain, have trouble sleeping. I know I do. This is a long-term problem for me, which is why I was so elated to discover Feels which is a premium CBD delivered directly to your door. If you're not familiar with Feels, it helps to naturally reduce stress, anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness. So for me, you know, I just place a few drops of Feels under my tongue, and then I can feel the difference within minutes when I'm falling asleep. It helps me fall asleep more quickly, uh, stay asleep. The important thing is to remember that CBD is different for everyone, so you have to experiment and find the right dose for you, which could take, you know, a week or two. But you'll get there, and if you need help, you can... Use the Feels free CBD hotline to help guide your experience. You can join the Feels community to get Feels delivered to your door every month. You don't have to go out and get it. And you'll save money on every order. And you can pause or cancel at any time. Feels has me feeling my best every day. And it can help you too. Become a member today by going to feels.com slash filmhouse. And you'll get 50% off your first order with free shipping. That's F-E-A-L-S dot com slash filmhouse to become a member and get 50% off automatically taken from your first order with free shipping. That's feels.com 
slash filmhouse. And we're back, ready to jump in with a, I think this is our fifth one, our fifth one halfway through the, the amount that I have for this episode. So we can pick up the pace if we need to. Um, let's see what we got. Okay. In Iron Man 2008, uh, the cheeseburger motif was Robert Downey Jr.'s idea because it was a disgusting Burger King order that helped him kick his drug addiction. I don't remember the burger motif. <laughs> I don't I, remember <laughs> the burger motif either. I remember, well, I don't remember it so much about that. No, it was, it was, yeah. It was whenever, right, he was like, the first thing he wanted to do when he got back was to get a burger. And then also at the end of, um, the end of, uh, uh end game, his, mm -hmm. his daughter's like, I want a burger. And then it's like, your, your dad liked burgers too, you know? Mm -hmm. so it's, <laughs> But it's not, that sounds more like trivia because it's not really about. It doesn't really movie. add anything to I, that it's more, film. I mean, connecting it to, to Robert Downey Jr.'s life and the fact that he finally decided he was at rock bottom eating a cheeseburger, mm -hmm. you're bringing a little something, like you're showing yeah. up with a little bit of detail. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's been so long since I cared about that Iron Man movie. I just can't recall the burgers. I was going to say, it feels like a stronger post is there was a cheeseburger motif in Iron Man 2008. And then you have a, mo a collage of all the times burgers are featured, whether subtly or less subtly. That seems like a that seems like a detail to me. Because one burger, a motif does not make. Well, there are several mentions of it, if I recall. It's like a thing. Okay, so it, but I feel like the thing would be the detail. Yeah. Not necessarily talking about how it affected Robert Downey Jr. I think that's a nice try. It's trivia, not detail. I'm going to I'm going to throw a curveball at both of you right now cuz I'm looking at the top comment. <laughs> okay. Uh -oh. Curveball. This might change things. The top comment says it wasn't that the burger was disgusting. It was that he realized he had a problem because he could no longer enjoy the burgers he loved while sober. So he decided to get clean and get control of his life so he can enjoy the things he enjoys without the need of drugs. And then the original poster said, OK, gotcha. Thanks for clearing that up. So that means that what this person posted here was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, then it's not even so it's like bad trivia. It's just it's wrong trivia is what it is. It's not a detail and it's trivia that's wrong because the person didn't understand whatever interview they were reading about. So so he was so fucked up that he couldn't enjoy the burger and he mm -hmm. realized that he could no longer get joy out of something like a burger and needed to fix his yes. life. According to Sounds a like an episode of South Park. Yeah, according to a commenter that is what the actual story is between mm -hmm. his relationship with the burger motif. In Iron Man. Well, so I don't know if that's a deal breaker for anyone. That definitely kicks it right down into the bad for me. <laughs> I'm going to put say <laughs> because bad. it was wrong. It, 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 it's like it would have been good trivia, but mm -hmm. it's wrong. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> <You're right. laughs> I'm going to go nice try because I think they were trying. I think they were mm -hmm. trying to connect something yeah. about the actor's life with mm -hmm. a maybe or maybe not a motif in the movie. I, I hear what you're saying, Dan. What if I tried to add two plus two and got five? You're trying to do math badly. Mm. That's some polyurethane yeah. corn trivia. <laughs> <laughs> At least yours is intentional. At least you purposefully wanted to cause trouble and mischief. This person, this person thought that they were helping others by causing pain and suffering. Um, okay, that, well, that's a two to one bad. So we're putting that in the bad column. Yeah, they didn't even get it right. All righty, let's move right along. You guys having fun? <laughs> yeah, we can do yeah. this all day. I just, I'm I like, give me the next one. Give me the next. <laughs> I really want to. I'm addicted, and I'm gonna have a burger afterwards. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, here we go. In Moana, 2016, Alan Tudyk voices villager number three, who suggests eating Hey Hey, who is also voiced by Alan Tudyk. So Hey Hey is the chicken. Um, from the film, the voice actor of both the chicken and the person in the village who suggests eating the chicken are the same. That's the, uh, I think that's 
That I think that's good because not having seen the movie, <laughs> you probably it sounds like just a random villager that mm-hmm. you wouldn't necessarily yeah. know is the same mm-hmm. uh, voice actor. But yep. there's an added layer of comedy there that you get when you realize that he's yeah wants to eat himself. Yeah, to I don't. Eat, know, there, yeah, to eat. There's the a lot of this there. this movie details and IMDb trivia that just like to point out like an actor doing a voice mm-hmm. was also in something doing a voice with this other person that I don't find informational at all. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just I like get that. Like, is a movie detail something that you could also pick up from the credits of the film? I mean, if it feels it like what Chris is saying, if you feel like it adds something to the film that maybe you wouldn't have noticed at first, like it, uh, I think movie details are generally really good in terms of second viewing experiences, like the things that they put there. So that way, when you go back and you watch it again, knowing what you know now, you you can enjoy the movie in a new way. Hmm. Um so I'm voting I yes. feel like I feel it feels like a technical it's very technical but um I mean I understand if you don't feel like it I honestly think I might consider this as a detail as well hmm. I, think I like Alan Tudyk be. a lot but mm-hmm. I'm I'm gonna have a criteria that if your detail is from the credits of the film you're not getting a good one from me okay all right well, I mean that's fair well what but. if what if um, I, I just feel like there are some uh, credits are details though. <laughs> some by cred- definition, you know? you're correct. Yes. Yeah. It just seems credits a little too obvious to me. I don't know. I guess not I mean, having seen the scene, mm-hmm. but I, you don't. It doesn't seem obvious that you would put that together. I'll tell you what this doesn't seem like. Having seen Moana not too long ago, it doesn't feel like this was an accident. It does feel like whoever was doing the casting go, oh, wouldn't it be funny? We, we have this one character in the village who talks about wanting to eat the chicken. Alan, you're already here doing the voice for the chicken. It'd be funny if you did the voice for the villager, too, because you're the chicken. Mm. doesn't feel like an accident. I feel like, like it's not just like at, he at voices the, two characters. <laughs> at the end of that trivia, if they were like, you know, and Alan Tudyk is a vegetarian or and he you know, has a chicken farm, then you're bringing mm. something to the table with your information. But see, that's almost, though, like, that's more trivia, not a detail. That's maybe further removed, yeah. I mean, I again, it's not science. Um, the only thing we can be certain of is how shit some of these are. But um, I don't know. I'm I'm willing to go out here and vote... That this is a good a good detail for me. I will I will vote that. That's, that's what I, I think it's intended. But I honestly I welcome the you know the writers and the directors behind the casting director. Basically anyone involved with Moana, please call me <laughs> um, and let me know if this was an accident or intentional. Um, because if it was intentional, I think that would probably maybe potentially sway Dan a little bit more. Maybe. If, maybe. if there's no way that's an accident. Yeah, which is why I that's why I feel like it's okay as a detail mm. for me. All right. But I, I can, I'm happy to disagree on the quality of this movie detail with you. This is pretty astounding. We have two good details. This is unprecedented. That's why I, I think your your barometer is on whack out of whack. Mm. Maybe. I don't know. I feel like I've seen a lot of these. These are way better than the ones I'm used to. Um, <laughs> okay, here we go. Old Boy, 2003. They didn't do the parentheses. They didn't do anything. That is actually an important their... detail, though. Yes, for this, it is. Only this for one. For this particular one, yeah. yeah. Um, the villain, Lee Woo Jin, is obsessed with the color purple. Examples include his umbrella, handkerchief, and the box. Purple not only symbolizes wealth and royalty, the guy is filthy rich, but was also the color of his... Be- the color his beloved sister wore when she died. Hmm. That's that's like Sherlock Holmes level movie detail to me. They don't provide a lot to go on here, but um, I haven't seen the movie, but okay. that seems like good costuming. It does seem like <laughs> a detail, especially the his sister or wearing purple, and that, uh, yeah, that's that's what. Th- 
to me threw it over just saying like yeah he's obsessed with purple which stands mm-hmm. for wealth i was like eh. yeah the sister thing adds some depth to it she's also, very important Chan- in that movie park chan wook is is notoriously meticulous with his filmmaking hey, I, I can imagine a lot of stuff of his ending up on movie details um properly there so hmm this is uh interesting yeah that, se- that seems like a, a production designer who's doing a really good job if, mm-hmm. they, if they're connecting that color in multiple places it feels it feels like it i just i feel so uncomfortable giving two in a row this is what, what i'm telling what, you this is what way, is going on this is way better than that chicken one i mean yes this is better i think this is definitely better than the chicken one Ah, oh, man, I'm racking my brain, though, to see if there's some point in the film where he goes, this box is purple because my sister loved purple. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Is it's, not, it's not super obvious, and it's maybe mm-hmm. not just oh. in one scene, but in mm-hmm. many scenes throughout the film in little yeah. tiny details. Tiny yeah. details. Tiny no. details, for sure. I think that also another thing about this is Maybe maybe the only reason I'm hesitant is because that whole purple not only symbolizes wealth and royalty, which is it sounds this sounds like the commenter or the poster trying to get the well, this is what's gonna make my post unique or whatever. I suppose it's just focusing on just so you know, all this all this shit is purple because his sister loved purple or yeah. whatever. You know, like um Yeah. But man, I think I, I feel like I think it it's be. I think it's good. No one no three comments. No one cared. <laughs> oh. There's also a pretty good chance. There's also a pretty good chance that someone posted this like a week after it had already been posted and was way more popular. Um, hmm. I mean, I'm gonna say yes. I think yes. It's a good detail, you guys. I think it's a good detail. Yeah. All right. I'm. I'm saying. I'm saying yes. Are, 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 uh, are you feeling uncomfortable because your baked-in opinion mm-hmm. of movie details might start to shift? I mean, it's well, not going to change my overall opinion. I just, you know. It could have been the curator. I think Rich True. was looking for so, good details. Maybe. Yeah, it could like have, have been. It was supposed to be random, but we all know when you're digging through movie details, randomness goes out the window. Holy cow, we have the same number of good details as we have bad details. This is in this is insane. We have four more. Are you guys okay doing yeah. four more? Yeah. Okay. Let's uh let's let's we're gonna we're gonna rush through the last four right after a word from another one of our sponsors. This episode of Film House is brought to you by Hymns. All right, I want to talk to you guys real quick about an actual serious men's health and wellness issue, and that's ED. Um, this is something that affects all men of all ages. Uh, pretty much. Uh, this isn't the kind of thing where, you know, you often see old men having to deal with this issue. There's a lot of factors, anxiety, stress, just the way your body works that can cause these issues in the bedroom. And I'm here to let you know that there is a solution. Um, Hims offers men's wellness products discreetly. They offer it without judgment. They offer it in the most affordable way that they possibly can. Uh, This doesn't have to be an embarrassing process for you. There are scientific solutions that HIMSS use to prevent ED and make it be the kind of thing that you don't even have to worry about. And the best thing about it is it's not going to break the bank for you because of the way it all works. Uh, ForHIMSS.com is all about men's wellness. Need help with ED, hair loss, or even have a cold? Uh, Interested in mental health or COVID home tests? HIMSS is here for you. So the way it works is basically Hims can get you the prescription medication that treats ED. It's real science and real solutions for ED. This isn't snake oil pills that you're going to buy in a gasoline station on your way to Las Vegas. Okay. Never tried those. Doubt that they work very well. Um, but this is actual science. This is actual medicine designed to help you handle your issue. Um, Hims also makes it easy because they connect you with a licensed medical professional online who can prescribe FDA approved prescription medication to treat ED. I think that 
having a relationship with your personal physician is really, really important. Um, and the best thing is that if that's the relationship you have with your physician, you can get a prescription from them, talk to your doctor, make sure this is something that's going to be right and works for you. And then you can take that prescription to HIMSS because I guarantee you it's going to cost you less and be way more convenient for you than using a brick and mortar pharmacy. The whole idea here is to make sure that if you have an issue, if you have a problem, you can get it solved quickly without any sort of judgment or embarrassment and as affordably as possible. Um, this actually, this whole thing, if you went in a different route, could cost hundreds of bucks. If you went to uh, a doctor you didn't know, um, waited in line in a waiting room, which I know people, that's a concern for a lot of people now, and then you took that prescription to a brick and mortar pharmacy and you tried to handle it that way. Not so much with Hims. Hims makes it simple and affordable. It's super convenient. It comes to your door. You don't have to worry about it. No more searching online for answers to questions about ED or sexual wellness. You just go to your HIMSS account. You can ask a medical professional you can trust. Um, you hear that? That's the sound of HIMSS working. working. <laughs> Damn it. That was going to be a one -er. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. We can yeah. do this. Okay? Yeah. Okay. I got it. I got it. Yeah. You hear that sound? That bacon frying on the pan in the background? That's the sound of your sex life frying back up again. <laughs> I am not joking at all. That is really loud bacon. Um, but I, uh, I think, I can't, there's no way. There's no way. No, 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 don't hit stop. I'm gonna pause don't it, I'm gonna stop. pause it. Why live with ED when the solution can be so simple? Try Hims today by starting out with a free online visit. Go to forhims.com slash filmhouseed for your free visit. That's forhims.com slash filmhouseed, F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash filmhouseed. Just so you guys know, prescription products are subject to medical provider approval and require an online consultation with the medical provider who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. See website for full details and safety information. Remember, that's 4 slash filmhouse ed. Cookies ready. Bacon's on. All right, here we go. We're gonna do, we got four more, then we're gonna, we're gonna do, I swear, if we end up with more good details, I won't, will not know what to do. Okay. <laughs> Silence of the Lambs, 1999. When character, or sorry, 1991. When characters are talking to Clarice, they often talk directly to the camera. Director Jonathan Demme has explained that this was done so as the audience would directly experience her point of view and more readily identify with Clarice over her male counterparts. Hmm. And then it includes a bunch of shots of just that. A yeah, bunch of characters all, all, looking, all looking directly into camera. This hmm. is a... Hmm. I believe also, I might be wrong, that... That's she's the only one that gets those POVs. Yeah, like it, the the all the POV shots in the movie are hers. Yeah, hmm. she's never looking into camera. Everyone else is looking into camera when when talking yeah. to her. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I it, it's not a bad detail, and it's not something that's super obvious. It's definitely yeah. It doesn't feel obvious. It's it's like a, a subtle quiet invisible thing that you're watching and you're not necessarily going to go why is everyone staring at me while i'm watching this movie but its purpose is to you know what what it says here right is to make you experience her point of view i mm. i because i i've heard this trivia before or this detail mm -hmm. and i was like huh i never know i didn't notice that at the time but yeah now that you mention it all like there's a ton of shots of them all looking at her directly into the mm -hmm. camera. I mean, I got to be honest with you, the only reason I'm resistant is because it would mean that, <laughs> that we now have more good than bad, but I don't think that's fair. No. And well, I don't want to be someone known for being unfair to this <laughs> process. You want to uh, treat the say. show with respect that it deserves? Well, yeah, you got it. Yeah. You have to be impartial. I mean, is there? It, can you think of a way to argue against it being a good detail? Or even I like honestly, a decent try? Like, I mean, it, the... The fact that it that that uh, having someone look directly into camera, the POV shot is is just a known 
technique in film mm-hmm. to do that. Mm-hmm. But the fact yeah. that it's so often and so purposeful for that mm-hmm. particular character as what makes it a good detail. Yeah. And it's, yeah, I was going to say it would be one thing if it was just a camera technique that happens all the time where it's like, ah, oh, they, someone doesn't understand editing continuity or whatever. Yeah. And they just, they just point something out. But this seems like a very explicitly intended camera technique that had a, a very specific purpose and it was used and it seemed like the effect worked um, when watching it. I'm just, I'm hmm. going to say good detail. Yep. It's good detail. It's good. I got to go good detail. I have to go good detail because if I say no, no, if I say not a good detail, the people are going to How is anyone you. ever going to trust me ever again when I rant about how shitty the details are? So, okay. All right. Well, we're going to put that in the good detail. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh my gosh. More good than bad. This is, could, could not have seen this coming. All right. <laughs> we got three more to go. Let's uh, go. All right. Real quick. We're doing it. In knives, they couldn't. By the way, they couldn't bother to capitalize the the f- first letter in the sentence here. They were so shift, excited man. to post this. So excited to post this detail. Shift is so um, out of the way. All right. In knives out 2019, once the will has been read, Marta leaves and the family follow her. As they start to surround her, the camera goes from steady to handheld to show how overwhelmed he, sh- how overwhelmed she is, until she gets back in the car, where it switches back. As she feels safe, mm. this is this um, is very similar to that last one. It's very and it's similar. It's like filmmaking technique to make you feel away, but it's much stupider somehow. That's that. My initial thought is that this is the bad version mm. of what we just witnessed, right? Like, yeah, no shit. That's like saying Paul Greengrass when filming the Bourne movies used a shaky cam to make the action seem exciting. Like, yeah, no shit. Like, it's, it's pointing clearly out more, way more obvious than mm-hmm. they're the, just getting they're into just, the psyche just, of it's Clarice. Describing, it's describing one particular shot mm-hmm. and not like, uh, I don't know, something that uh, something that's done throughout the film. Also, also, here's another thing too in the clip that we're watching. Like, it, it goes to, it goes back to a tripod camera when she gets in her car but she's not safe in that instance at all like she is still stressed and overwhelmed i think they just wanted to feel really chaotic and so they did the thing you should do when you want something to feel chaotic is you make the camera feel chaotic as well i'd say nice I'm, try i think this is the bad version of what we just saw for silence of the lambs same i agree this is a, it's the exact a one-off opposite. instance it's the it's the exact opposite now the question is: Does it get a nice try, or does it get a bad? I think it's a nice try because it's not readily obvious that it's handheld to tripod. Like that's mm-hmm. not something you would inherently realize watching it. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is like something to that where it's like, oh yeah, I wasn't even paying attention to that. Mm-hmm. But you felt it; it was there yeah. because Ryan Johnson is a fantastic director and knows what he's doing. So, so, um, that's a bold state. Dan, how do you feel? Most of the time. Um, I'm there. I, <laughs> yeah. I, because, uh, the last one was so good in comparison, mm-hmm. I'm going to say it's bad. I don't think this okay. person is trying. I think it's, it's one of those where at the beginning you were saying sometimes people point out something just cause they're not familiar with, uh, maybe tenants of filmmaking. Mm-hmm. Um, that that's just like, yeah, duh, we, we go handheld for a minute to make it seem a little crazier. Bad, bad detail. Bad detail. Chris says, nice try. I'm actually, you know, I'm going to say this is a bad detail. <laughs> For kind of the same reasons as Dan. It makes me angry. <laughs> I'm wagging my finger. I'm wagging my finger. <laughs> I bet detail. you are. So we're going to put that democratically in the bad. Um, not the worst thing we've ever seen, but like, it's like, yeah, yeah, no shit. That's how you're supposed to feel. All right. Here we got two more. In American Psycho... 2000, uh, Willem Dafoe, Detective Kimball, acted each meeting with added, acted each meeting with Bateman three ways in three different takes. Okay, hold on. This is what? really hard to read. Okay. Do I need a diagram? In American Psycho, 
the year 2000, Willem Dafoe, who played Detective Kimball, acted each meeting with Bateman. So he had meetings with Bateman. He acted each meeting three ways in three different takes. One, he knew Bateman was the killer. Two, he only suspected Bateman was the killer. And three, he did not suspect Bateman. These clips were later spliced together to keep the audience guessing. Now, it seems a little dodgy on the director's part, but that's an interesting movie detail. Well, yeah. uh, well my, my, I guess that to me is more trivia. Is there a it difference? Seem like, well, yeah, you I wouldn't. So. Th- you could, if you watched that movie a million times, you would never know that. So there's no detail in that movie that tells you that. It's it, not like it, it needs to be provided through some sort of other knowledge. Yeah. Right. That makes it trivia. Hmm. To, in my mind. Mhm. I mean, I think it's interesting. Yeah, it's yeah, interesting but I trivia. I feel like there's all I'm kinds hypnotized. of all kinds of decisions that f- filmmakers make every single day in how they want to make their movie that aren't necessarily details. You know, like it's a detail on the way the movie was made. A detail to me would be is if the clock was a different time every single like when he was the good guy, it was 10. uh, What is it? 10, 10 or whatever, which is a smiley face when he's a bad guy, when he doesn't like him. It's like it's like in the background. And when you're looking in the background, you can see all the different shots and know which one it represents because the clock represents that emotion. Yeah. That to me sounds like okay. a detail, so, so as opposed to just giving an actor direction. I got you. Yeah. So if if it's not something that's actually in the film, you're gonna kind of give it a, a no go because it's it's not a detail that, to yeah. a piece of information about the production. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that makes it nice try, but that's not a detail. I'm with Chris on this one. All right. Well, I'll give it a nice try, I guess. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think find it, a nice try. I find it very interesting. Um, it is. It, it's for sure interesting. And they can always be interesting, Dan. But they can also be not details. Because <laughs> I feel like it doesn't correspond to anything. It's just what they decided to do. Like, it's like, we decided to film this movie at night. Okay. Because it's scary. Okay, that makes sense. That's cool. That was a good decision. Better than filming it during the day because it would have been less scary, probably. But we also. But I don't know that saying filming it at night was a detail. You know. I really, I really um, hope if if there's someone out there watching this that's made it this far that they could go and add your corn trivia to the movie details subreddit. I would. <laughs> oh God. I would really appreciate that. <laughs> Let's see how many. <laughs> we'll keep an eye out for the corn <laughs> trivia, please. I hope so. <laughs> With just a screenshot of corn, like because you always have to put a screenshot, whether or not it adds nothing or whatever. Um, okay, <laughs> this is a good one to go out on. Uh, Shrek, no date. Nice. Uh, Which one? Colon Shrek colon Lord Farquaad gets an erection under the blanket as he looks at the princess. You can actually see the blanket rise before he hides it. Oh. Uh, I'll pull the clip of clip up for you guys so you can see the erection before you make your decision. <laughs> I don't know. So, uh... Mm. Hmm. So I remember see, this. I remember this being one of those things kind of like the is. Disney you know, sex, sex written in the, the clouds or whatever. Stuff, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I think if he looks down, doesn't he look under the sheets or whatever? He's thinking about his precious princess here. Uh-huh, God, uh-huh. This, Shrek is such a hideous fucking movie <laughs> it is really I, ugly it is so it's one of the ugliest movies ever uh okay so that was uh-huh. him that was that him it? looking at his yeah can that's really subtle takes a drink okay yeah, i saw uh, it Ooh. there's something down. there hold on but he is acknowledging it well but oh you can you see you i don't i think that it looks like there's some movement i think that's a good movie detail because it's like you can see the movement there. There's definitely some movement happening. There's movement before his hand pulls the blanket. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is classic, you know, hide your erection. You, oh, you kind of adjust the blanket. Yeah. Physiologically, it is pretty wild that, like, if you imagine where his crotch must be. 
Oh, further that down his, and back. His erection than that. almost shoves up against it, against his hand, which is is pretty wild for someone so small, at least. And then and then yeah, because he looks down, it must be an erection. Here's a question: Is that a detail? Yeah, I think that's a detail. I don't think you. I never. When you watch that initially, you don't inherently notice that. You What's don't inherently think about, that the cartoon though? includes an erection. No, I, I think it's so subtle. Mm-hmm. It's so subtle. It but when you subtle. see it, but when what, you see his it, weird, you're like mm-hmm. his it, weird it makes you laugh. thing. Yeah, and because it's a kids' movie, so you're like <laughs> they snuck movie. in an erection mm-hmm. into a kids' movie. Hmm. Hmm. I think I would I, say yes. This is a good you one. You would say yes. yes. You would say a detail. I think this is a this is a hard yes. <laughs> uh Dan, how are, what are you Oof. thinking? I don't know. I'm I'm waffling a little bit because it it is I feel like he acknowledges it enough when he just kind of looks mm-hmm. at it. Mm-hmm. Um I I don't know, I'm waffling. I'm I'm trying to decide whether or not it's just something that's on screen and it happens or because mm-hmm. I mean, it is something I I feel like you you watch that once and you don't notice it at all. And because mm-hmm. now yeah. that I've participated in this, the next time I don't, which won't ever happen, I watch Shrek again. Um, mm-hmm. I'll, you know, know that there's that detail there. Mm-hmm. Well, it sounds like mm. you're describing a good detail. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's at least a nice try. Um, mm. a nice try. And Chris says for sure good detail. I think it's for sure good detail. I just, I just, what else could it mean? Like, I get not, no, I get not expecting an erection to show up in a kid's film. I get that. That makes sense. But is that the only reason you don't notice an erection show up in a kid's film? Because you wouldn't think an erection would show up in a kid's film? I, I well, feel I like think they do also, acknowledge it's so it, It's subtle. It's, it's a tongue-in-cheek for people paying attention, really paying attention. It's not like, like, uh, as you described, the, the hook Mm-hmm. It's like oh, it that's the front hook. center. No, because it's 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 like mm-hmm. it's not even the f- focal point of of the, but what's it, on camera. And it's Farquaad acknowledges it. He like smirks. He's like, look at my erection. He does smirk. Look, there's my it erection. Is, it is played. It is played kind of like a joke, but like maybe one of the jokes that like <laughs> parents. But it's not. It's would not watch. like. It's not like um, like oh, like a big. He he doesn't say my boner. Yeah, like, and it's not like it's, he doesn't say that. You don't see anything but, big poking out. He doesn't like draw attention to it. It's just subtle, kind of like it's not the most subtle thing. I would say it's a movie detail, and I'm standing by it. You would say movie detail. I don't so know. So if, if that's really... something that's in the script, like Farquaad gets a boner looking in his magic mirror, then it does not count as a detail. Yeah, because it's Let's obvious. Get the Shrek script, you know. It's obvious. Are you pulling up the Shrek script right now? <laughs> uh, I just, I kind of, I think I'm kind of leaning towards Dan on this one only because I don't know what it means if he doesn't have a boner. Yes. It's not like something else happens. It's the point of that moment. That you would go like, he just looks down at his dick. Like he goes, oops, and looks down at his dick. And I think the only reason you don't notice, oh, okay, here we go. Chris, that Chris is. The mirror rewinds and plays. It begins to play again from the beginning. Farquaad. Ah, perfect. Farquaad looks down at his bare chest and pulls the sheet up to cover himself as though Fiona could see him as he gazes sheepishly at her image in the mirror. So, so according the to the script, script he's <laughs> covering up himself, like, uh, bashfully. So, as it's if not like he's look- That's hmm. stupid. <laughs> And maybe, mm. maybe that's their way of have, putting in an erection joke and getting it to uh, slide by Disney approval. But I mean, it's, Disney didn't make it. Didn't Disney had? Or, to, uh, I don't know why they chose. <laughs> uh, 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 DreamWorks. What is, it? what is it? Miramax. DreamWorks. 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 Yeah, yeah. I mean, they were already oh. making something disgusting, <laughs> something that nightmares are made of, the Shrek animation style. <sighs> Uh, you know, James, as king of the show, you're gonna have to make the call. I think here's here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna abdicate the throne, and I'm going to ask anyone who has made it this far into the podcast, <laughs> anyone who is watching, to please comment below 
and let us know whether or not you think this one counts as a detail, knowing that, very subtle, you're probably not gonna notice the first time, but also what else would it mean other than him getting a boner? I guess maybe him being bashful. Was do you even think he got a boner? Like, could it just be some sort of animation artifacting? Either way, uh, let us know what you think down in the comments. I'm genuinely curious to hear it. And um, and also, uh, thank you to Chris and Dan for joining me on this adventure. This is our last movie detail. This, oh, thank you for having me. I'm. It was a wild ride. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Well, the, Good, I'm glad. The, the best thing about it is that there's always new details, <laughs> except some of them are reposts. Uh, just, just on a way, thank you ever, everyone for watching and listening and, uh, just to send us out, here's, uh, a shitty movie detail pulled from Real the quick, shitty movie details subreddit. But before you, you send us out on the yeah. shitty detail, can I ask if your world is shaken at all by the number of good details we discovered today? I am pretty, I'm very surprised. What, what did we end up with? What was the final count? We had four good. Two nice try, four bad, okay, and then the Shrek detail, which is kind of on the fence between good and nice try. So way better batting average. But I guess sometimes you need to prove the rule, I guess. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I'll just send us out with a shitty movie detail here. Um, in Pulp Fiction, 1994... Marcellus Wallace says he's pretty fucking far from okay because Los Angeles is in 850 miles from Oklahoma, which is pretty fucking far. <laughs> so he says he's far from okay, the abbreviation for Oklahoma. I mean, that's just the a bad letter joke. O, the letter K. And he says that because Los Angeles is far from Oklahoma. This is an example of a shitty movie this is detail. Corn something trivia. that this someone is made up. Someone someone did as a intentional shit on what it is. Yeah, it's bad. There you go. Um, Thanks, James. So you're welcome, and thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for coming on the show, Chris and Dan, and we will see you on another film house soon. Next week, probably. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Producer MC, producer MC. Still delete your best 16 like when man producing MC. Producer MC. Came for the times it was rare to produce.